When you buy a bike, you are buying into a story. Sometimes that's a performance story. Sometimes that's an aerodynamic story. Sometimes that's an association with a pro team or a pro rider. This video on the Mosaic GT 45 limited edition bike, of which 42 were made for the pro's closet, is a slightly different type of review video where I talk more about the people and the stories behind the bike than the bike itself. I will also, also talk about how the bike rides and the characteristics and the specs as it's built up with GRX 11 speed, etc. But this is a review of a different sort. This review is about some of the stories that have gone along with this bike, such as breaking a pelvis in the Dolomites and being carried up and down steps, taking a cold plunge and a sauna in a cow barn, or riding on the dusty billowy hills in Nebraska for the Gravel Nationals. Stories of job success and job failure with multiple rounds of corporate layoffs that are rocking the bike biz these last couple years. Bikes are vehicles to good times. And just like a motor vehicle, you don't want the thing breaking down. That's not the memory you want, but in the rear view mirror, often it's the stories we associate with the bikes that form our bonds with these machines. So if you're game to watch a different type of review, take a second, hit the subscribe button, and then we'll talk stories that I associate with the Mosaic GT45. Here's a quick story, how do reviews come about? I've been doing YouTube reviews on my own channel for about a year now and have done reviews at other titles like Velo News, Bike Radar, Cycle News, etc. and was the editor at a few of these places where I worked with colleagues doing the same thing. The impetus for reviews comes from a couple sources. One, the editor or the writer who's doing it will reach out to the brand and say, hey, this is a cool bike, could I please check it out for a review? The other way is the brand or often a outside PR firm will contact the media outlet and say, hey, we've got this new thing coming, would you please review it? I can't speak to how others do them, but I'm continuing in the way that I did when I worked at Media Titles, which is do a legitimate, honest review for better or for worse. These are not paid. I support myself here through a few means. One is through YouTube ad revenue, which is a small portion. The other is through annual sponsors, Castelli Clothing, Giro Helmets, and Feedback Sports tools and stands. And then third way is through sponsors of particular videos, such as Burt Coffee. Anyhow, the way this review came about is a third party public relations firm contacted me and said, hey, we've got this special edition bike. Would you care to review it? The story was it's built my Mosaic, the titanium brand here in Boulder, Colorado, run by my friend Aaron Barczyk. Certainly hold nothing against that guy. Um, it was done through Pro's Closet, which sells used bikes, but also a few new bikes. And because it was Pro's Closet, it was done as a special one-time promotion for the Radivist, which is a media brand that is a sister company to Pro's Closet. I ignored that request from the PR company in a subsequent follow-up email. Then my buddy Spencer Pallison, who was working at the Pro's Closet at the time, said, hey, could you help me out? This is an idea we're trying to push through. Would you check out the bike? I said, sure, fine. So responded to the PR folks, went and picked up the bike. A few days later, Spencer got whacked as in a round of layoffs, which we've seen across the bike industry, like all the major bike brands and then peripherals like Wahoo, Zwift, et cetera, have all had single, if not multiple rounds of layoffs. <laughs> I was certainly part of that fun uh, back with one of the multiple rounds of layoffs at Outside. All that to say, this kind of took the wind out of my sails for reviewing this bike. So I, I don't really care about the fact that it's a Toyota Land Cruiser paint job. Like, I'm not a car person. Both the cars we have here are Toyotas. Combined, they probably are not worth <laughs> this one bike. Not to say the car connection, that doesn't really do anything for me. Similarly, the fact that it was a Radivist Special Edition was kind of a weird thing to pitch to other media outlets. Certainly no disrespect to the, the folks at the Radivist, they do great work there, but you know, would Cycling News want to cover a bike that was specially made for Cycling Weekly? It was just kind of a weird thing. So just didn't really do anything for reviewing this bike for a while. However, in the meantime, I was riding the bike 
fairly often, you know, test bikes come through uh, on regular. Some have embargoes where we'll get a bike, we the media will get a bike, you know, sometimes a few days, sometimes a few weeks before uh, it's officially unveiled. And those deadlines, certainly artificially created by the brands themselves, will often drive the editorial schedule of people like myself as to when those will go out. This was just in the background. And then in between those bikes that had a short deadline, I'd hop on it either just for my fun rides or for things like the race course recon videos that I was doing a bit of this year. For instance, Cowtown gravel up in Kremlin, Colorado. Grabbed this bike because I thought it's just a nice, comfortable, middle of the road, big tire, highly reliable bike to ride. And we went up to Kremlin, stayed in uh, one of the buildings owned by the Scholl family who are both the athletes and multi-generational Colorado ranchers. They invited us in to do a sauna and a cold plunge in one of their cow barns that Sean had, you know, built, you know, hand built into the cow barn. That was certainly a first for me, super enjoyable talking about all the University of Colorado athletes who had come through there over the years. And the bike on that course, you know, certainly not the lightest, not the raciest, not a super aero bike. It's, you know, round titanium tubes but just a very reliable, comfortable, plush titanium ride where the object was to film a course recon video, not to do a bike test, but you know, this was just the bike that I grabbed for that. This is a little bit like Sound of Music. Yeah, there we go. We've got, we've got the Trap Family Singers, multi-talented, beautiful area, the cattle, everything but the, the, the Swiss cowbells. Oh, those are up ahead. But that's not how we do in Colorado. What do we have? What do we have? We've got bacon breakfast burritos. I ain't never had one of those in Switzerland. What you got, Switzerland? Got a little chorizo He's got there. No, yeah. <sighs> Nobody does like Colorado. Similarly, going up to Garing, Nebraska for the USA Cycling National Championships course to do a course preview there. This was the bike I grabbed. I'm like, you know, it's probably going to be really loose and sandy and rocky and there's a single track bit and this is just a bike that I won't have to think about or fuss with. You know, sometimes review bikes, especially, you know, the more unique their characteristics are, the more attention they require, at least right off the bat as far as, you know, setting them up or maintaining them. A mechanical bike you don't have to worry about, oh, did I charge the batteries? You know, it just, it just works well. The geometry is nice middle of the road, you know, like a 71.5 head tube, BB drop to uh, 75 millimeters, not super twitchy, not super lazy and slack, just good, reliable bikes. So that's, it was like my go-to, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at for some, time, some of these videos where the point of the video was not the bike, but it was the bike course, and this is what I grabbed. This certainly wasn't my first experience with this type of bike. A year, a couple years ago, I guess two years ago now, I carried one of these bicycles up the backside of Mount Lemmon down in Arizona. <laughs> I was down there with my friends Yuri Hauswald and Betsy Welch who were doing some gravel stuff, some gravel videos, some gravel bike videos, gravel tips videos, etc. And we got it in our heads that we should ride the backside of Mount Lemmon, Dirty Lemmon as it was called. And we got a route from a local who had just pulled it off the interwebs and didn't uh, vet it himself and we ended up walking up the Arizona trail, which is a hiking trail, not, not a bike trail. So, you know, certainly got a feel for the heft of the bike. It's not the lightest, it's, you know, like 20 and a half uh, pounds as built with GRX 11 speed and these DT Swiss GR 1600 wheels. There's two variants, well, there's probably a few more, but two main variants of this GT 45. The GT one is custom geometry. The GT two, 45 is stock geometry, but there are nine sizes, even sizes from 48 up to 62 with a 55 centimeter size also in the middle there. So you can get sizes pretty dialed in and because it's you know straightforward standard Thompson stem, Thompson bar, you can adjust to get your geometry pretty darn close to custom. You know, I've got a custom Envy road bike that I love here. It's the blue bike hanging on the wall. Its specifications, its fit, are identical to an old 2011, 2012, something like this, 
Tarmac SL4 I've got hanging on the wall when Neil and Jake from Envy were out here asking what specs, what geo specs I would like for a custom Envy bike as a demo. I said, well, I don't know, I love how this Tarmac feels. All I have to say, custom bikes are beautiful and sweet and they look great, but almost always you can achieve <laughs> that same fit with a, you know, with standard componentry. This review, where I can give you my honest, if rambling take on the Mosaic GT45 is supported by Perk Coffee, which is making some great coffee down in Savannah, Georgia. They've supported a number of cycling causes over the years, and you can get a variety of blends from mild to wild, even some instant, as well as whole bean and ground. You can save 15% on your order. You can get some tall boy bottles for the hot days or some shorter bottles at perkcoffee.com. Just use the code the ride 15 Thanks for supporting the coffee company that's supporting me. Another thing I see when I see a mosaic bike is the guy at the helm of the ship, Aaron Barczyk. Just had dinner with him and some other guys a few nights ago. One story with Aaron, he helped carry my broken self out of the mountains uh, in the Dolomites. We were doing a cycling vacation there together with some other friends a few years ago. I managed to, while filming with the GoPro, put myself into a guardrail at speed. Don't do that, kids. Use GoPro mounts, it's particularly when you're going downhill on roads you don't know. Found it! Yeah. This should be some good footage, Ben. <laughs> Flying through the air. Like... <laughs> and what's left of your chamois and all your skin gone. But he's alive and well. Thank you, baby Jesus. Don't record on Descents, kids, <laughs> or this will happen to you. Anyhow, Aaron and his wife Liz and some of our other friends were quite hospitable and taking care of me at the hospital while I effectively screwed up their vacation. I also think about Mosaic Flagstaff Week, a great event here in Boulder during the summer where for five consecutive days, a group meets up at the base of the Flagstaff Mountain and climbs up to 2,000 plus feet as a group. Just a fun social community thing. I also think about what the inside of the shop looks like where Aaron and his team not only put these bikes together, you know, cutting the metal, welding it, but then just do an exceptional job of painting these things. And while this Toyota paint scheme really doesn't do anything for me, you should definitely go check out their Instagram page and just look at all the exceptional and varied designs that their talented crew can put together over there. The term handmade gets thrown around a lot with smaller brands like Mosaic. Fact is, all bikes are handmade. You know, bikes coming out of the giant factory, including all those Trek bikes and you know, specialized bikes coming from Taiwan. Their hands, their talented hands, putting those bikes together as well, for sure. I'm not trying to convey that there are two different types of like just generic robot-made factory bikes and then beautiful artisan handcrafted bikes. Like it's all people putting all these bikes together. But back to what I was saying at the top of the video, when you're buying a bike, you're buying a story. And for many of us, it's easier to wrap our heads or at least our emotions around an, an individual we know or a group of individuals we know rather than a large, albeit talented team we may never meet. Until recent years, I had probably left titanium behind as a comfortable but not as sophisticated material and that you can't manipulate it as well as carbon fiber. So while that plush give is nice in the saddle, you know, standing up on the bottom bracket and having that move around, that's not a desired characteristic. So that was my just kind of like rough impression where I had left titanium for a few years. Got back on a titanium bike in the gravel configuration, a Cherahala from Lightspeed, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. It feels super plush. When As rocks are getting kicked up, doing gravel group rides, I'm thinking like, it's titanium, it's no worry at all. Uh, unlike sometimes when you hear big rocks hitting carbon bikes and they go, oh, that, that could be bad. And, you know, it turns out while you can't manipulate titanium exactly the way you can with carbon fiber, you can certainly beef up the BB junction area to make it maybe not as stiff as carbon fiber, but certainly plenty raceable for gravel purposes and certainly plenty rideable for gravel purposes. Big Brennan Wurtz a former world record holder, I guess he's still a current world record holder in rowing, can put out far more power than you or I can 
homeboy did 500 watts for 20 minutes. 500, zero, zero, 20 minutes on a mosaic. Granted, Aaron built the mosaic extra beefy for Brennan, but that's you know, something. If you're not doing this stock bike, but a custom bike, you, know, you can have the tubes tuned uh, to your riding style and preferences and weight. So again, for riding characteristics, this is a straight up the middle, very confident, very comfortable, not too racy, not too slack, can handle 45s, that's thus the GT45. Not the lightest, but not overly heavy, just over 20 pounds. If I were to own this bicycle, for one, I would have gotten a different paint scheme. <laughs> and two, would change up the gearing. We've, with a 40 tooth ring compared to an 1140 cassette, the thing gets spun out with the quickness. So for instance, coming down uh, the last drag on the USA Cycling Nationals course in gearing, I was riding with my friends Leah and Allison and Zach, and they just casually pedaling were pulling away from me because I could not keep up at the ridiculously high cadence needed for that. For you, you know, gearing and tire selection depend on where you live and how you like to ride. But for me, 185 pound guy who likes to ride in the mountains, a 42 ring, not enough, especially with an 11 in the back. So yes, this bike, Mosaic GT 45 Special Edition Pro's Closet Radivist Toyota Edition, feels great. And there are certain things that engender warm, fuzzy feelings in me looking at the label, the logo, and thinking about the memories I have had while riding this bike. There's other things that really don't do anything for me, like the Toyota paint scheme. Okay, now some details you can see and some you can't. The finishing welds are beautiful. There's internal routing, which anybody can do, right? You can poke a hole in the frame, run a thing through, but what Mosaic does is a puts a little tube inside this tube so you don't get the brake hoses or the shift cable rattling around inside the frame. And then a threaded BB. Not super fancy, not groundbreaking, but just something that's durable and relatively easy to service. So you can have this bike for the long haul. So yeah, to me the bike feels great. Not just you know how the titanium and rubber and other parts feel in my hands and under my feet and body, but the emotional connection I have to looking at the logo and thinking about the different rides I've had along the way. Be curious to hear from you what associations you have with some of your bikes that have nothing to do with a particular you know, rake angle of the fork or a weight of a tire or anything like this, but what is your favorite bike and why? Let me know in the comments down below. So that was a bike review of a different sort. Thanks for indulging me. Now go get on your bike and go enjoy the ride. When I say enjoy the ride, it's not just the physical act of that. I mean, using these wonderful vehicles that are bicycles to transport you to another place. Thanks for watching and we'll see you down the road.